you want to protect, you want to give life a chance. So you want to not only heat Mars, you want to find a way to block the ultraviolet light coming from the sun. The Martian atmosphere is mainly composed of around 95% carbon dioxide, a few percent nitrogen, and some argon, along with trace amounts of various other gases. Among these, CO2 is abundantly available on Mars, making it one of the most common resources aside from the Martian soil. What makes CO2 valuable is that it contains oxygen within it. If we can free this oxygen from the CO2, can we use it for practical purposes? In today's episode, we are finding the answer to this question. This is Reveal the Mystery. If you are curious to learn mysteries of the world, space and beyond, consider subscribing. The air on Mars is mostly carbon dioxide, not good for breathing. To live on Mars, we need to figure out how to stay alive there. Some people might think we could use the systems on the International Space Station to help us on Mars, but there's a problem. If the machine that makes oxygen breaks, we could run out of air and suffocate. If the machine that cleans our water stops working, we could die of thirst. Let's look at the option of International Space Station more practically. The ISS has been operational for over two decades. To ensure a sufficient supply of breathable air for extended durations, two crucial systems come into play. The initial system is the Water Reclamation System, WRS, which gathers water from sources like urine, moisture, and condensation, purifying it for consumption. While it may not taste ideal, it is safe to drink. Additionally, some of this treated water is utilized to generate breathable air through electrolysis. The second system is the Oxygen Generation System, OGS, operating by passing electricity through water to produce hydrogen and oxygen. Astronauts use the oxygen for respiration, but handling the hydrogen, which is flammable, poses a challenge. To mitigate this, a Sabatia system is employed, combining excess hydrogen with waste carbon dioxide to yield water, methane, and some heat. The water re-enters the water system while the heat contributes to maintaining a hospitable environment. Currently, there isn't a practical application for the methane, so it's released into space. It's intriguing to note that in space, our primary concern revolves around conserving individual atoms like hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon, rather than complete molecules such as water and cooking gas. Nonetheless, there remains a quandary with these systems. Over time, resources diminish, potentially jeopardizing life support. To address this, there's a concept known as Level 2.1, emphasizing the importance of bringing essential supplies, maintaining their cleanliness, and establishing a plan for replenishing high-density materials. Nevertheless, even with this approach, we will inevitably encounter limitations, necessitating further exploration and solutions as we venture into space. On the ISS, Specialized devices devised by the Russian Space Agency utilize containers filled with powdered sodium chlorate and iron. When heated to 600 degrees Celsius, the sodium chlorate undergoes a transformation, becoming sodium chloride and oxygen gas. In 1997, there was an incident involving one of these solid fuel containers on Russia's Mir space station. This event led to a brief eruption of flames and temporarily impeded access to one of the escape vehicles on the station. Fortunately, the crew managed to extinguish the flames without causing harm to the station's core structure. Most space crews opt for pressurized oxygen canisters brought up during refueling missions to address minor leaks, particularly in prolonged missions of lower urgency. However, these systems rely on Earth for resupply and are unable to function autonomously for extended periods. This raises the question, how can we generate breathable air on Mars using the resources available there? This inquiry leads us to the third level of consideration. Level 3 is a fancy way of saying living off the land on Mars. Instead of having easy access to water like on the ISS, you'd have to go to specific places on Mars to find ice. This special technology, called MOXIE, uses a process to turn carbon dioxide into oxygen. It's like doing the opposite of burning fuel. MOXIE needs to be careful not to get too hot, as it could harm other rover instruments. So far, MOXIE has made about 122 grams of oxygen, which is about enough to keep a small dog alive for 10 hours. This might not seem like a lot, but it's actually quite a feat considering the challenges involved. 
Moxie doesn't run all the time, just for short periods every couple of months, making about 6 to 12 grams of oxygen per hour. This is because the rover has limited power. To make more oxygen in the future, we'll need a bigger power source and more energy. A big problem with Level 3 systems that use CO2 is that CO2 is a super sturdy molecule. It means it takes a lot of energy to break it apart. Even though MOXIE's solid oxygen cells are tough, they're not great at saving energy, and they need rare, expensive materials to work. Also, the Martian air doesn't help because these cells like really hot and high-pressure conditions, which Mars doesn't have. That's why they need special gear like a compressor and a hot oven. But in the future, we might find a better way to do this on Mars than on Earth. It's called low-temperature plasmas. To get oxygen from carbon dioxide, you need to give it a lot of energy to break it apart. This can be done by using tiny particles called electrons, heating it up a lot so the atoms inside shake and separate, or by shaking it vigorously so it breaks on its own. In a CO2 molecule, the connections holding carbon and oxygen can wiggle in different ways. If these wiggles are strong enough, they can make the molecule break apart naturally. By sending electrons through a gas using electricity, you can put energy into these wiggles of the gas molecules. This creates a low-temperature plasma where only a few gas molecules become charged. When many CO2 molecules with different wiggles come close, something interesting happens. Most of the energy from their interaction goes into the molecule that's already wiggling a lot, making it wiggle even more. This makes the other molecule lose its energy and wiggles. Over time, the highly wiggling molecules break apart, making carbon monoxide and atomic oxygen. This turns electrical energy into chemical energy. Scientists on Earth are looking into this to break down CO2 because of climate change. However, on Earth, it's tricky due to our atmosphere's high temperatures and pressures. But on Mars, it's better suited for this process. Mars has lower pressure and it's colder, which helps this process work well without extra heating. Right now, it's mostly experimental in labs, aiming for around 25 watts of power for continuous operation. But in the future, it could be a big step toward using Martian resources to create what we need. Reaching distant planets in the future will require a collection of advanced technologies. Among these, the ability to continuously generate breathable oxygen and usable fuel directly from the Martian atmosphere could be the most crucial. It would mark a monumental achievement for humanity and greatly enhance the feasibility of sending people to Mars and establishing a self-sustaining colony there.